Here it is, the important document we've been waiting for for Social Security, including retirement, disability, SSDI, survivors, SSI, VA, and RRB. I have all the details and what this document contains right here in the video, so let's get right into it. All right, now last week I was out in a separate video talking about the importance of timing right now and why we need to put all of these current lawmakers on the record for a permanent raise to monthly benefits for all the millions and millions of fixed income beneficiaries I mentioned at the beginning of this video who are living well below the federal poverty line. We also understand the midterm elections are coming up and we know that these lawmakers that are currently in session right now either want to keep their job or all these potential new lawmakers want to get a job. As a result of that, this is the perfect time to reach out to all these lawmakers and get them on the record, like I said, for a permanent raise to monthly benefits. We all understand in this community living on a small fixed income income benefit is not sustainable. It is not working anymore. Maybe a couple years ago, it was a little bit easier, but right now with this rapidly rising inflation that everything that Congress has done with all of their policies and everything like this and their lack of action to help out the low income and fixed income is why we are in this situation right now. Well, we need to put them on the record and that's where this document comes in. So let's get into it and talk through all the details. However, really fast before we do, thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here or or if you haven't done so yet, please make sure to subscribe by hitting the button right down below the video. As I am your one and only daily advocate, I'm watching all this new information hitting the wire each and every day. All the new information, all the announcements, anything coming out of Congress, as well as anything out of the administration, the president, new bills, packages, proposals, uh, amendments, reform to very important fixed income benefits, and of course, anything pertaining to money, checks, benefits, uh, raises to benefits, programs, uh, anything else like that. Of course, I'm watching it all very, very closely and bringing it to you right here in these videos so that you can understand how this is going to impact you, your money, your benefits, your lifestyle, your bank account, and of course, everything else going on right now. It's a very busy time right now. We need to pay attention to everything very closely, but don't worry. That's why I'm here for you right by your side every single day as your one and only daily advocate. That is my dedication. That's my commitment. And as always, I'm sticking to it. So again, please make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss any videos going forward. And let's jump into it and talk about what's going on right now, as well as this guy, this document right here, what it all means and what we've got in the works for you right now. All right, so like I said in that video, seriously, right now is a very, very important time. Timing is key, right? We know that timing is very, very key. Well, it's kind of interesting because as the midterm elections approach very rapidly, we're starting to see some of these lawmakers scrambling around, right? They're like a bunch of rats down in the sewer. They're running all around. They don't know where they're going. They don't have a clue. All that they know is they want to do something. Well, they don't really know what they're trying to do, right? But they're trying to escape the sewer, <laughs> right? But really, they're just running around in circles. Circles. The fact of the matter is, these lawmakers need to be put on the record right now because here's the thing. How many of people in this community, let's just be real, are living with a monthly benefit or a monthly income below $1,132 every single month? I'm going to go ahead and bet probably a huge, huge percentage of the people right here in this community. Those of you watching this video probably have a monthly benefit or a monthly income below $1,132 every single month. Well, guess what that number represents? The federal poverty line. If your income is below that level, or if your monthly benefit is below that level, guess what? You're technically below the federal poverty line. Is that acceptable? Honestly, in my opinion, it is not acceptable, okay? Again, everybody has their own opinions. That's just my opinion. I do not think that is okay, especially in this country. And based on what the president has said, no older adults or people with disabilities should ever need to live in poverty in America. Well, who lives on a fixed income benefit? Yeah, exactly. Older adults, seniors, uh, the elderly, and of course, people with disabilities. So is it acceptable to be living on a benefit below that threshold? Probably not, right? So... As a result of that, the video that I came out with the last week, I said, hey, I'm going to draft another letter because I got this letter right here. If you didn't catch that video from maybe, I don't know, maybe 10 days ago, maybe two weeks ago, I'll link it down below, actually. Um, if you want to check the video out, I got this letter from the White House and they sent me a letter. So here's the thing. The letters that I've been drafting, these guys, these documents have actually been being read. Someone is reading these. The reason I think that because I got this letter back in response. In fact, let me show you the letter. I showed you this letter in that video, um, what was it? I don't know, 10 days, maybe two weeks ago or so. Here's the letter that I just pulled out of this envelope right here. Um, you can see it's empty now. So anyway, I just pulled this letter out of it. This is the one that I received. So well, the fact of the matter is, somebody is reading my letters. That's a good thing, right? 
Now that we know that somebody's opening and reading my letters, we need to continue on them because it's a time, right? Um, are we going to cast votes based on people that maybe are not working in our best interest? Again, I'm not here to tell you what to do politically. I'm not here to do that. I do not take political sides in my videos. All I'm saying is, I think all of us want to know the answers to our question, which is, what's in it for us? Hey, yo, lawmaker, um, what are you doing for us, right? We all want to ask that every single time. They go off on their rants and they talk about all kinds of business that we don't care about, all kinds of things like that. But really what it comes down to is we want to know what are they doing for us? How are they representing us? They have the job because we put them there, right? So the collective uh, you know, population of the United States put these people in their positions because we believed in them that they were going to do something better for us as a whole in our uh, selective states and or as the country as a whole, right? Have they done that? Again, I'm not here to instill opinions or anything like that. I'm just simply saying, we wanna take that into consideration as we go and vote during the midterm elections, right? And again, this is not a political statement. I do not take political sides in my videos. I'm simply saying we all want to know what's in it for us. What is here for us? A higher benefit? A, be a raise to our benefit? Maybe a stimulus check? Maybe a monthly recurring payment? I mean, what is it? Tell me, right? So as a result of that, I've drafted another letter. We're going to send this one out to Congress. Yes, I don't know how many letters I've drafted by now. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is somebody is reading them because I got a letter back, okay? Somebody's reading them. Somebody is opening my letters. Somebody is acknowledging that I am sending these letters out to them. That's good, okay? As a result of that, I've drafted another letter here. So in just a second, I'm gonna bring my wife, Corey, and she's gonna read this letter to you. It's short and sweet, but basically I laid it out in this letter and said, hey, Congress, you know, everything that's going on right now, it's not our fault. You know what I mean? Uh, it's not our fault. We are being the ones that are ultimately being penalized as in, you know, our, our wallets and our bank accounts are being emptied every single day by their bad policies and the, and the things that have been going on over the last couple of years. It is because of that, we are the ones that are actually feeling all the effects of this. And I've been asking them, what have you been doing for us, right? We're, we've been calling on them for a raise. So in this letter, in this document, I'm basically calling on them for that saying, hey, you know, let's get a raise going here. Let's get a raise, a permanent raise to benefits. Let's get something going here. I also point out in this in this letter really nicely, would you want to watch your loved ones, your parents, your siblings, your neighbors, your friends, the people that you love and care about have a, have a hard time paying for food every single month, keeping a roof over their head, paying for their utilities, watching them struggle. Would you want to see somebody that you love doing that? I don't want to see that, right? Well, as a result of this community right here, I see it down in the comment section every single day. Thousands and thousands of comments come in from those of you here in this community reaching out, telling me your stories. And again, that's why I'm here for you. I want to continue doing anything I possibly can. As I've said a thousand times in all the videos in the last like, you know, little while. I mean, I literally say it in all my videos. I want to do whatever I possibly can, which is why I continue to send these letters. I don't really think there'd be any point in me showing up like, you know, <laughs> Congress, like Capitol Hill. Hello, here I am. Here I am, everybody. I'm here to make a speech at Capitol Hill, right? I, I don't think that's going to make any difference. But <laughs> I guess if I knew it was going to be a permanent raise to benefits, and if I knew for a fact that I could get a raise for people here in the community, if I knew for a fact that I could get Congress to approve a stimulus check or a monthly recurring payment, you better believe I'd be right there. I'd be pounding the table. I'd be doing anything I could. Standing on top of my head, um, doing backflips in the parking lot. I, seriously, I don't really know. I'd do anything that it could possibly take. But obviously, that's not going to work, right? But... Seriously, if I knew for sure, if I knew it was a, a, a slam dunk for sure win that I could get something for all the people here in this community and other people out there that have not discovered this community yet, if I knew that I could secure something like that by showing up to Congress, I mean, by all means, I would do that in a second. I'd be on a plane flying over there and I'd be doing that for everybody here in the community because I want to do whatever I can. I see the struggle every single day. And as many of you here in the community have said, you know, would these lawmakers ever consider living on a fixed income benefit for like, I don't know, a month or something? to see what it's like living in the shoes of a fixed income beneficiary. It's kind of funny because every time I see those responses down below, which I see quite a, uh, quite a few of those, realistically, they wouldn't do it. Why? Because they wouldn't. They already know that, why would I do that? That would be awful, right? They know what it would be like. I mean, let's be real. They get paid like almost $200,000 a year. Are they really going to consider going from, say, what does that come out to? About $16,000 a month, I think that is. Uh, mathematically, yeah. It's about $16,600 a month is how much they make. A month, by the way, okay? Do you think they'd go from that down to, say, $900 a month or $841 a month? 
Not a chance. They're probably spending that a day. You know what I mean? Not a chance. So anyway, the fact of the matter is, yeah, I totally agree with you. It would be nice if they walked in the shoes of a fixed income beneficiary. Even if they did it for just say a week or three or four or five days, they would see very quickly that, um, wow, it's not a good situation, right? So anyway, that's my um, kind of little rant on that. <laughs> but anyway, I want to bring Corey in. She's going to read this document to you. Again, this is the final draft as of right now. I read through all the comments. Well, I'm going to be fair with you. I did not read through all the comments. I do my best to read through as many comments as I can on every single video. Honestly, I get so many comments every single day. I try to do my best to read all of them. But realistically, it would take me I don't know, 12 hours a day. I mean, seriously, all day to read through all the comments and they still come in, you know what I mean? So it's great. I love the comments, but I read through as many as I possibly could on that video from last week, tried to gather as much information as I could. I considered as much as I could in this letter. Uh, so please, if you like it, let me know. If you don't like it, again, let me know. I'm always open to feedback. I'm not perfect in any way, shape, or form. I'm doing my best to represent you as a fixed income beneficiary. I'm doing my best to represent everybody here in the community. I know it's not gonna have everything for everybody, but again, I'm trying to do what I can to serve the vast majority of people, okay? And again, like I said, I'm not perfect. Never have been, and I never will be. So is my letter perfect? It's probably not perfect, but again, I'm trying to get as close to perfect as I can. Anyway, enough out of me. Let's bring Corey in. She's gonna read this to you, and then we're gonna get it out right away. So again, I'm excited to read your feedback down below. Let me know if you like it. Let me know if you don't like it. Again, let me know as well. I'm always open to crit uh, constructive criticism. Nothing wrong with that at all. We got to continue to prove and we need to stick together uh, through this time right now because it's a tough time. And realistically, if we don't stick together, who else do we have? Yeah, exactly. I'm here for you in any way that I can be. Please subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. Share the video with your friends, family, social media, and please go back and check out some of the other videos here on the channel. Also, check the video out down below at the top of the comments section that I linked uh, from reading this letter, this letter right here. Uh, it's the, the video showing this letter um, that Corey was reading that I received from the White House in response to all my letters that I sent out. So anyway, go back and check that video out. I have it linked down below at the top of the comment section. Anyway, with that being said, let's bring Corey in. She's going to read the letter to you. And again, I appreciate you watching this. I'll catch you again later in the next one. All right, Corey, it's all you. Take it away, and I'll see you again soon. I'll see you for now. See ya. Hello. My name is Matt, and I'm reaching out on behalf of our community, consisting of nearly 400,000 low-income and fixed-income older adults and people with disabilities. We have reached out a number of times expressing our concerns about rapidly rising inflation and the depletion of purchasing power with our fixed income benefits. With the midterm elections quickly approaching, many of us continue to ask, what are you doing for us? Millions of seniors and people with disabilities who are living on a fixed income are living well below the federal poverty line. In our opinion, this is unacceptable. We are very aware of the multiple bills in Congress to reform Social Security, SSDI, and SSI, but only a few of these pieces of legislation address benefit levels and raising them to the federal poverty line. The SSI Restoration Act is a great example of changing an outdated program and lifting benefits to give the roughly 8 million beneficiaries a more equitable standard of living. The Social Security Expansion Act is another great example that would increase benefits by $200 per month for millions of beneficiaries, again, demonstrating the importance of higher benefits for the most vulnerable. All of us are reaching out collectively to encourage you to work on reasonable legislation that would increase fixed income benefits to a baseline standard minimum benefit of at least the federal poverty line. Currently, the federal poverty line is $1,132 per month. Unfortunately, Far too many of us are receiving a monthly benefit well below this level. Lastly, would you want to watch your parents, siblings, or loved ones struggle to put food on the table, struggle to keep a roof over their head, and struggle to pay all the bills just to survive? This is the unfortunate reality for far too many Americans right now, and that needs to be changed. Thank you for your time and consideration. Matt, advocate for the low income and fixed income, through the Blind to Billionaire YouTube channel.